Hi, I'm Bruce, and this is my family, Annie, Elsie, Betsy and Doug. And over a year ago, we quit the rat race in search of a simple, fulfilling and more sustainable life. Follow us on our learning journey towards living off-grid, self-sufficiency and cottage renovations. Join me this week as I take you on a tour of our cottage, showing you round and telling you about our plans room by room. Hi everyone and welcome to my cottage tour. Um, I know quite a few people have actually been asking to see around and I haven't actually been doing all that much filming of work so I thought I'd take this opportunity this week to show everybody around. It's a really cute place, looks a little bit like a gingerbread house from Hansel and Gretel but there's plenty of work to be doing so I'm going to take you through uh, each room and each piece of the house and explain uh, what our plans are and sort of how we're dealing with it right now. So come on, let's go. I suppose it makes sense to show you guys the outside of the house first, starting with uh, three extensions that you can see. They've been built very creatively out of slate, metal, round quilter poles and some cladding. There's a few leaks here and there and I've got some big plans for all three of them actually going forward. So the first extension I'm going to take you through is the entrance. It's been named the utility porch just because it's got all of our utilities in it. Um, we did for a short while have a couple of chairs in there that we would sit and watch the sun come up in the mornings but it's since also become a bit of a dumping ground for things. But we've had a bit of a whip round before showing you guys around so it's not too messy. Long term plans for this, uh, we are going to take this down and this is actually the south side of the house. So my plan is, is to run a greenhouse along the entire length of the house. Um, I'd actually read uh, in a permaculture magazine about a tree nursery in the highlands of Scotland and they did this and actually managed to get an extra two months before they'd have to have any heating on in the house where it acts almost like a passive uh, solar heater, heating up the stone and then radiating that heat out into the house um, in the evening. As the stone heats up it will also um, be able to keep all of our sun loving, heat loving plants alive. So we've got kind of big ambitions to grow things in there that maybe you wouldn't normally be able to grow over here. So that's all very exciting. The other extension which is towards the west of the house, my plan is to take this whole uh, building down and rebuild it, uh, maybe timber frame with an apex roof, uh, Velux is in the roof and just to allow a a lot more light into the house. As you'll see when I take you around it's uh, had some really cool quirky ideas but there's not a lot of natural light making its way into the house and it's something that I really would like to have. The extension you see behind me now actually attaches to our bedroom which I will show you later uh, but that has been boarded up by the previous owners and currently we use it just as a storage but our plans are are to hopefully get hold of a second-hand set of bifolds or some nice sliding doors and to reopen that uh, again to let more light into the bedroom uh, and then I think Annie has a, a cool idea to maybe be able to walk out of that and then into that extension where we can have a wood-fired hot tub outside um, sounds very dreamy feels like miles away at the moment but I'm not gonna say no to that 
Anyway, come on into the house now, through the utility porch, and I will start to show you around. So yeah, Annie put these two chairs here in the utility porch, and for a while we used to get up in the morning and make a cup of coffee, and we'd sit here and watch the sun rise over the top of the valley. And as I'm sat here now telling you about it, I'm thinking, why did we stop doing that? But um, this is the utility porch anyway. And it's basically where we kick off our boots and make sure we don't traipse load of mud into the house. Uh, that's pretty much it for here. There's not much else to show you. So let's go and head over into the kitchen. Okay, welcome to our kitchen. Um, it's probably my favourite room in the house at the moment. In it we've got our 9 kilowatt wood burning stove. That's the only heating for the house at the moment. And today it was below zero degrees, ground frost out, and it's kept us lovely and warm. And that's with absolutely no insulation in the house really whatsoever. Um, so I'm kind of over the moon with that. I was quite surprised to see that one stove could heat pretty much the whole house. We've got a, a range gas cooker that runs off a portable gas bottle and you can see on the wall I have my blackboard. That's my never-ending infinite to-do list but I love the fact that the kids have put their own one on there which I've got to be honest I've been a bit guilty of neglecting that one at the moment. Uh, we have a Berkey for our drinking water. There's a well here. Um, did have the water tested and so just as a precaution I put it through the Berkey because that takes out any potentially harmful pathogenic bacteria and and heavy metals and all that sort of thing. And um, there's lots of kind of quirky cool things in this room. Um, I absolutely love the stonemasonry around the fireplace and the old wood and um, although we're going to be insulating in here there's definitely a lot of features in here that we're going to be keeping for the future. And we have uh, no hot water so when we're doing dishes it's just a case of boil the kettle. Okay so I think that's everything in the kitchen. Now I'm going to take you over into the living room. This is another really cool room uh, with a nice reclaimed fireplace. I don't think any of this stuff would have originally been in the house. Um, but yeah lots of kind of cool features. It's kind of small but um, it's perfect for what it's for. Okay, so this is one of the three extensions on the west side of the house. Um, probably one of the ones that's in the better condition. As you can see, it's built out of quilter poles and doors uh, turned on their side. And yeah, a bit of a mishmash, but it's a really cool room. And just want to probably take it down and rebuild it, but not because there's actually that much wrong with here, but just because it loses a lot of heat uh, this end of the house, it's like a complete heat sink and I think it would be really nice to have an apex roof here, a couple of Velux windows in the roof and maybe timber frame and just kind of square it off. Um, these are obviously all the dreams, going to take a long time. I mean, maybe you can see what I mean when I say it's like a lifetime's work because I want to be doing it all myself. Anyway, I think that's all I can really show of you here, so let's go and take you into the bedroom. Okay, so welcome to the bedroom.
don't know if you can tell at the moment, but behind me are two double bunk beds, uh, one each for the kids, and this is mine and Annie's bed. This is not a permanent arrangement, thank God, um, but at the moment there's only one bedroom in the house, and uh, if you see at the head of the bed there, that is the wall that adjoins the extension that's on the east side of the house. And yeah, my plans are to keep an eye out on Dundeal for a decent set of either bifold or sliding doors. Uh, and then I'm going to put that back through. Uh, put a support across because actually that wall got taken down and it looks to me like it needs uh, an RSJ or something putting across supporting the brickwork above it. And then yeah, put in sliding door, let loads of natural light into here and then have it so if we want we can step out that side, the sun rises up over over that sort of direction and I think it'll be really nice. Anyway, I think that is probably enough of the bedroom and now I will take you upstairs. So at the moment we don't have a staircase going to upstairs so I'm going to have to use that ladder behind me but any of you out there that are carpenters with heavy experience building staircases then feel free to give me some advice. Um, I think I've come up with a design, an idea um, to have a U-shape staircase that is in the corner where the ladder is but it's very tight it probably isn't going to meet like building regulations not that I'm really that bothered about that but um, so it'll be quite steep, I think. But I think it could work. I'll put it up here now so you can have a look at it. Pause it if you know what you're talking about. Okay, welcome to the upstairs. So the girl's been talking. Apparently, this is going to be Betsy's room. If you can see down there behind me, that's the uh, where the stairwell's going to be. And then basically, in the middle. Here is going to be kind of like it's going to be kind of like a, a library area. Uh, you know, have some bean bags and all that sort of thing. So basically, the whole of the upstairs is going to be for the kids. And um, yeah, I'll take you to the other end now and show you where Elsie's bedroom will be. So this one's um, slightly smaller, but I'm going to recess her wall to the other side of the chimney stack so that she has a little bit of extra room. And that is pretty much it. But yeah, for those of you that do know about staircases and all that sort of thing, um, so that when you look at my design, you can see that although it looks like the staircase comes up the side of the chimney stack, there's a fair bit of space the other side once you get into the first floor. You see there, so there's the opening. So we can actually enter this side if that makes sense. And anyway, saving the worst till last, I'll go and give you a quick look around the bathroom, but we won't look at that too closely because that needs an awful lot doing to it. Okay, so we're in the bathroom. Uh, what's to be said about this room really? It's very small, does exactly what it's supposed to do, kind of. Uh, we've actually moved our compost loo from our camper van into here temporarily before I build well, a new one that's uh, much more suited for this environment. Anyway, I think that is everything. Um, you'll have to let me know in the comments if you feel like I've left anything off. And um, not sure what I'm going to be doing next week just yet. But uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I mean it, if any of you actually do know what you're talking about, then I really appreciate everybody's comments and help that they give me uh, on all these projects. And it's quite handy, actually, I've realised, to let this kind of information out right now, because there's no good me getting a load of information after I've already done something. So, yeah, anything helpful to add, then feel free, drop it below. And I will see you guys next week. <laughs> I actually need to put this in, because as I finish that little bit, Annie's pointed out to me that I'm saying that the bathroom works exactly as it should. But actually nothing works in there. We have no running water to the taps, the toilet doesn't work, the bath doesn't work, but the shower kind of works. <laughs> so we can stay clean, that's the main thing. Anyway.